I've decided to turn my little ADHD fixations into something fun for you and me. Whenever I get fixated on a food related topic, we're just gonna dive into it together. And today's topic is huilacoche. I hope I'm saying that right. I looked it up, huilacoche, huilacoche. We'll start with the basics. What the heck is it? So huilacoche is a porous corn fungus or a corn smut. It feeds off of immature corn kernels. As it grows, it explodes into puffy like bluish gray lumps and it's really hard to control the spread of it because the pores get in the air, in the soil, and it can't be killed by a lot of the, like the fungicides. Now this description might make it seem like a pest and sometimes it is, but other times it is an exciting little treat. While its consumption hasn't really caught on in North America, some cultures see it a lot closer to a delicacy than a nuisance. Eating cuilacoche started in Aztec cuisine, but it really popped off in Mexico in the 1800s. Sometimes called corn truffle by how valuable it can be, cuilacoche takes a carb-heavy food, corn, and turns it into one with protein, rich in lysine, magnesium, and calcium. Because at the end of the day, it's a fungus, you can really use it in any recipe that uses mushrooms. Historically, it's been used in quesadillas, tamales, papusas, tacos, and more. A pretty versatile treat. After all this research, I found myself getting kind of hungry. I've always been an adventurous eater and I love to try new things. Luckily, New York City is well known for its diverse cuisine, so it didn't take me long to find a place where I can try huilacoche for myself. I'm here at Citrico in Brooklyn, a family-owned restaurant in Prospect Heights with recipes influenced by the southern states in Mexico. They offer two dishes with huilacoche, tacos and gorditas. I got both. I'm looking forward to this so much. It's been probably years since I've had a new fruit, vegetable, or fungus, and ah! So this is how a piece looks like whole. You can see how at the bottom it started off as a little corn kernel, and then it blossomed into basically a mushroom on top. And I'm not quite sure whether I should just, or go in with a taco, but I think to get the full new food experience, you have to try it on its own, so cheers. That's delicious. It tastes like fresh corn and mushroom together, which is exactly what I thought it would taste like. But for some reason, I saw so many people online calling this food something you'd have to get used to eating. Now I'm pumped. So the taco here is made with huilacoche, some like vegan crema, and some cheese, and I think a tomatillo hot sauce. I feel like it's bound to happen. That's delicious. Oh my god. It's not a super unfamiliar flavor. So. The outside of the huilacoche is like spongy, but on the inside there's a very little bit of crunch from the corn. And with the cheese and crema making it so creamy, this might be one of my new favorite taco fillings. Now onto the gordita. Cheers. I've realized now that the restaurant forgot to put the star ingredient into the second meal that I ordered. While it's delicious, it's definitely missing the point of the video a little bit. I hate confrontation, so we're just gonna take some from the tacos, put it in, and try again. I think I like it even better in here than with the taco. The flavor is like a little earthy, little lemony, little creamy, little crunchy, and just a tad bit sweet from the corn. In conclusion, huilacoche is an intimidating ingredient in concept, but in practice, not really. Now that I kind of got a vibe for the ingredient, I wanted to try to make something with it myself. I went online and just like skimmed recipes. There wasn't a lot, but a popular one was the quesadilla. They just sauteed the huilacoche with like onions, garlic, tomatoes, and then added it with cheese in some tortillas, you know, toasted it up, and then bada bing, bada boom. Seemed easy enough, so I wanted to give it a try. Obviously first I had to find the huilacoche myself, and I could not for the life of me find it fresh. I really tried. I even checked with some of my restaurant owner friends to see if any of their like grocery depot connections can snag it for me. And one of the guys' brother, who's the main like grocery buyer, said that I'd have to go to Mexico for it. That's a little bit out of my budget, so I had to settle for canned. But I don't feel too bad because I realized that Citrico also used canned for the food that they make, so I can't do better than a restaurant. I kind of want to just open it and eat it out of the can first before I make a recipe. I don't know why I'm nervous because I've already tried this. 
Why did it make that noise? Oh, it smells good. It does not, however, look very good. It looks just kind of like black sludge. The one at the restaurant looked a lot better. Maybe I could take one out though. Oh, why does the one at the restaurant look way better? Since they told me that that one was also canned. Oh my, you guys have to see this texture. It's so different from the one at the restaurant. Take a look at that. It's just so inky. You could barely tell the kernels apart. What? Do you see that? In comparison, the canned huilacoche I saw at the restaurant, you can tell each of the little kernels apart. It was like a gray, bluish, slightly black. Looks like a totally different food. My only assumption is that it must have been a different brand. I did look and this was the only brand I could find. This days of searching, all I could find was canned Goya. Cheers. <laughs> It does not taste delicious. It tastes like bitter from like, I don't know. Why is this a completely different experience than the one I had at the restaurant? I'm a little bit thrown off, but we're gonna make the quesadilla anyway. After that little taste, I was intimidated. So I decided to make the smallest quesadilla known to man using little corn taco tortillas. I sauteed some shallots. I did not burn it. I know it looks a little burnt, but it looks a little browner on camera. Added garlic. A handful of cherry tomatoes, smushed them down as they were cooking, and then seasoned them. And when the tomatoes were almost fully cooked, I added a big old blob of our star ingredient. After cooking that for a few more minutes, it turned the whole mixture a dark brown. Toasted up my little tortilla, spread it on, added two pieces of cheese, and then let that steam to get a little melty. Next came my other tortilla, and you know the drill. I made a quesadilla, I toasted it on both sides, and when it was done, it looked something like this. Honestly, not too bad. The cheese was melty and gooey, and it was finally time for the taste test. I am nervous, but let's do it. You know, it's good. <laughs> what? It's good. What? What? Maybe the problem before was it was like too potent and that's why I was getting that bitter taste. But once you put it with like the creaminess of the cheese and the tomato and the onion and the garlic and the flavoring, it adds like a, like a lemony something element. It tastes nothing like the huilacoche I had at Citrico, but it's not bad anymore. Like I, like I'm enjoying this. Hey babe, let's get a second opinion. Try this quesadilla. That's good. Right? Yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. Plot twist. <laughs> do you want to finish it? I have just a small piece left. <laughs> I do. Success. I made the smallest quesadilla. Knowing there was a high probability that I was gonna not be able to finish it from that initial taste of the canned huilacoche, but it works. That's delicious. Even with the success of my quesadilla, I'm still baffled at the difference between the canned huilacoche I had at Citrico and the canned huilacoche that I got. So I'm gonna call them and see if they're okay with letting me know what brand they had. Hi, um, sorry, this is a slightly specific question, but do you mind telling me which brand of canned huilacoche you guys use? I'm not sure, but I can check here. Just give me I would really appreciate that, thank you. I've been on hold for 10 minutes and 31 seconds, so I'm gonna assume she forgot about me and I'll call back. I'll call back another time. <laughs> One week later. Hi, um, I'm so sorry to bother you, but do you know what brand of huilacoche you guys use? Yeah, it's not in a can, because we don't really have canned stuff. That so makes sense. It's like maybe in a jar, but... I appreciate it. That's so helpful, actually. Thank you. It's not canned! That makes 
so much more sense. I wanted to see if it came jarred, so I did a little Google search, um, and I couldn't really find anything. So after that, I searched for Frozen, and I did find this website where you can get Frozen Huilacoche, but it was really expensive and fully sold out, so we were kind of out of luck. I think Huilacoche season is in June, July, so as of recording, I have a few more months before I can even think of trying to find it fresh but I'll keep you updated on my Instagram if I do. Life is short, and one of the things I find pleasure in is finding and trying foods that I might not have grown up with. It's really crazy what the earth can bring us. I had really fun learning in this video, but I really was just learning, so if I made any mistakes, then please let me know. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, because I'm gonna be putting out more videos like this one. This whole year is gonna be a little update of the YouTube channel, so if you'd like to support that and more higher quality videos like this one, then please check out my Patreon down below. I also publish a Patreon exclusive video once a month with a slightly more controversial topic that I can't really post to the general public. Also, not only do patrons get to see videos early, but they also have access to my Finsta, where I also post a lot more private and interesting things. But that is all I have for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot more fun making this video than I have on YouTube recently. If you've noticed, I've been a little at my A on here, but that is going to change this summer. Hope you enjoy. Goodbye! Shout out to all my patrons, but especially my bodega bosses and my OG bodega babes. Jessica, Christina, Lucia, Alex Creates, Laura, Kaylin, Marielle, Alex, Planet Earth, Jenny, Gemini, Janine, Daisy, Michelle, Eduardo, Chloe, Abigail, Dana, Vanessa, Nakia, Matt, Mariana, Andrew, McKenna, Shanta, Adrian, Don, Susan, Trudy, Clark, and Sarah. You guys are the absolute best, and these videos are made possible with your support. If you want to support me non-monetarily, then just subscribe and stick around to watch another video. It shows YouTube that you like my content. I also have a TikTok and an Instagram if you want to check me out there and merch. Always down in the description. See ya!